cover-up. It began in Roswell, New Mexico. Near White Sands and Alamogordo, Roswell was home base for many early tests of atom bombs and guided missiles. Here also, the practice of military stonewalling may have been perpetrated. The case began when Roswell businessman Dan Wilmot witnessed an amazing object over the town. His son tells the story. This was their home in July of 1947, and it was one summer evening they were sitting out here. Dad looked up in the west and saw an object that came down and had lights blinking, and it was rather frightening to him, but he said all of a sudden it seemed to rock a little bit and sort of counterbalanced itself, wiggle a little bit, and then seemed to settle down and take off at a rapid rate of speed. The next day, Reporters heard that the Air Force had found fragments of the mystery object crashed on a remote ranch northwest of Roswell. Excitement ran high until officials announced it was only a weather balloon. Major Jesse Marcel, in charge of the operation, now tells a far different story. They took pictures, of course. They had a whole flock of microphones there. They wanted me to, to they wanted some comments from me, but. I wasn't at liberty to do that. So all I could do is keep my mouth shut. And General Ramey is the one who discussed or uh, told the, the, the newspapers, I mean the newsmen, what it was and to forget about it. It was nothing more than a weather observation balloon. Of course, which we, bo we both knew differently. Major Marcel had to keep silent because of his strategic position at that time. He was in charge of all security and intelligence on atomic tests in the United States and the Pacific. Marcel retraced his secret recovery operation across the hot New Mexico desert. We left uh, Roswell perhaps around 3.30 or 4 o'clock in the afternoon. As you can see, it's flat. It is very difficult. In fact, uh, with just verbal directions, we never would have found it. We had to follow the rancher out there. The crash site was so remote, it took an entire day to drive there. The following morning, we went out to the site where the crash was. And uh, what I saw, I couldn't believe there was so much of it. It was scattered over such a vast area. So we proceeded to pick up as much of the debris as we could, loaded in the wagon. We filled that up. It took us a good part of the day to do that because uh, there are such small fragments that we had to do a lot of picking. We found a piece of metal uh, about a, far, a foot and a half to two feet wide and about, about two or three feet long. Felt like you had nothing in your hands. It wasn't any thicker than the foil out of a pack of cigarettes. But the, the thing about it that got me is that you couldn't even bend it, you couldn't bend dead it. Even with a sledgehammer would bounce off of it. So, I knew that I had never seen anything like that before. And as of, as of now, I don't know what it was. There is new evidence that the FBI then got into the case with a different cover story. Lawyer Peter Gersten, searching through declassified government documents, came across a mention of the Roswell case. One of those documents related to an incident in Roswell, New Mexico, uh, which indicated that the object which had crashed was an experimental kite. Uh, the FBI investigated the incident and determined that it was terrestrial, that it was from uh, an organization which had been doing research in, in experimental kites. What did crash in this desert? A UFO? A weather balloon? A radar reflecting kite? It was not anything from this earth that I'm quite sure of. Because I was being an intelligence officer, I was familiar with just about every, all materials used in aircraft, and in our air travel. This is nothing like that. It could not be. It could not have been.